Today's topic is friction as a force. Take a ball and give it a slight push to make it roll on the smooth surface of a floor. Watch how far the ball travels. Now push the ball with the same amount of force on a rough surface. What did you notice? The ball travels a shorter distance on the rough surface than on the smooth surface. Why do you think this happens? Whenever an object moves over a surface, the surface applies a force to slow down or stop the movement of the object. This force is called frictional force or friction. Friction always acts in a direction opposite to the direction of the motion of the object. Hence, it opposes the motion of the object. A rough surface causes more friction than a smooth surface. That is why a ball travels a shorter distance on a rough surface than on a smooth floor. We experience friction in many activities in our day-to-day -day life. For example, it is easier to pull a suitcase with wheels since wheels reduce friction. Friction slows down motion, but it also provides the grip necessary for motion. Let us now look at the uses of friction. Frictional force helps us in walking. If there were no friction on the surface we walk on, we would slip. Friction between our shoes and the ground stops us from slipping. Friction helps us to light a matchstick. The rough surface of the matchbox provides friction to the matchsticks to light. We can pick and hold things due to friction between the things and hands. Friction allows us to write on paper. It is difficult for us to write on smooth surfaces such as glass and polythene due to the absence of friction. Friction between the brakes and wheels helps bicycles, bikes and cars to slow down. Spikes on the soles of shoes used by players and athletes increase friction to get a firm grip on the ground. Treads are created on tires to increase this friction between them and the road. Thus, treads prevent a vehicle from skidding. Friction produces heat. When we rub our cold hands, we will feel them warmer. In winter, this helps to keep our hands warm. So we saw that friction is necessary. But too much of friction is not good either. Let us now look at some harmful effects of friction. Some machines such as sieving machines have parts that constantly rub against each other. This creates friction between the parts and they get worn out. A lot of energy is wasted due to friction. To move, a bus or a car must spend a lot of energy to overcome the friction between the surfaces of the tires and the road. Try pushing a stationary car. You will see how hard it is to get the car to move. Friction causes the wear and tear of tires and of course, our dear shoe soles. Slippery things such as wet soap and ice have smooth surface that provide very little friction. So, it is not easy to hold them properly. Sometimes we want to reduce friction. Things such as bicycles, ceiling fans and engines of vehicles have moving parts. These parts need regular maintenance to reduce friction to work smoothly. There are several ways to reduce friction in different situations, so let's take a look at some of them. Oiling reduces friction. For example, oiling the moving parts of bicycles, ceiling fans and engines keeps them working smoothly. Ball bearings are small metal balls used in a machine 
to enable the moving parts turn smoothly. This is because they reduce friction and allow smooth movement. For example, bicycles and fans make use of ball bearings. Polishing also reduces the roughness of a surface and thus reduces the friction offered by it. For example, the surface of a slide is polished to reduce friction so that children can easily slide down. A very fine powder enables to reduce friction. For example, using talcum powder on a carom board helps to reduce the friction between the striker, coins and the board.